the topics I have chosen for today's discussion are classes amphibia and reptilian. First coming to class amphibia. Amphi means dual, bios means life. These animals lead a dual life that is they live on land and also in water. That's why the class got the name amphibia. These are the first terrestrial animals but they are not successful because their reproduction is linked to water. For the development of their embryos, water is required. That's why they could not become completely terrestrial. For terrestrial life, they have got two pairs of pentadactyle limbs. But claws or nails are absent on the toes and fingers or on the digits. These are pygrotherms. They can't maintain a constant body temperature. Then, <clears throat> the body of these animals is divided into a head and a trunk. A neck is absent. As I have told you, neck is an adaptation for terrestrial life. Because these are not completely terrestrial, they lack a neck. A tail is present in some of the adult the amphibians, but in others, a tail is absent. Then, the alimentary canal, the excretory system, and the reproductive system open into a common chamber known as cloaca. Cloaca is the common opening for all these systems. So, the digestive system ends with cloaca. Respiratory organs are many. The skin of the amphibians is always kept moist to help in respiration. Skin is also not covered by any scales. It is smooth and moist. The skin, the lungs, the buccal cavity and the gills, all of them help in respiration in this class of animals. Then, coming to the heart, they have got a three-chambered heart with the two auricles and one ventricle. The oxygenated and the deoxygenated blood mix up in the ventricle. So, the heart pumps only a mixed blood to all the body parts. The RBC are oval, nucleated and biconvex. Both hepatic and the renal portal systems are well developed. Then, brain is poorly developed and the cranial nerves are 10 pairs. Eyes are well developed and provided with mobile eyelids. The middle ear, sorry, the ear is made of middle ear and internal ear. There is no external ear. The opening of the middle ear is covered by a tympanic membrane. In the middle ear, there is a single bone known as columella oris. Then, the nostrils open into the buccal cavity through internal nostrils. Then, the kidneys of these animals are mesonephric and the kidneys produce mainly urea. So, amphibians are ureotelic animals. They too possess an urinary bladder to store urea temporarily. Then, the amphibians are completely absent in seawater and sexes are separate except for a codons. A copulatory organ is absent. So, except in apoda, fertilization is external. The eggs are mesolithal and the development is indirect with one larval stage. In the case of frog, the larva is known as tadpole larva. The tadpole larva resembles a fish in every respect. So, appearance of a fish-like tadpole larva in the life history frog supports that fishes are the probable ancestors of amphibia. The tadpole larva undergoes metamorphosis and for this metamorphosis, the hormone thyroxin is required. There are some amphibians like salamander. The larva of salamander is called axolotl. The larva of this animal fails to undergo metamorphosis and it exhibits 
neoteny or pedogenesis the larva develops gonads and reproduces this is known as pedogenesis <coughs> in this way there are the number of characters that apply to class amphibian then coming to the examples buffo melasticus it is the toad it has poison glands rana tigrina it is the common frog indian frog hyla it is the tree frog it has suckers at the tips of its digits and with the help of these suckers it can climb trees salamandra common name is salamander and its larva is axolotl ichthyophis it is a limbless amphibian alites it is known as midwife toad it takes care of its eggs it exhibits the parental care so that is about uh, class amphibia coming to class reptilia reptum means to creep or to crawl as these animals creep or crawl on the land the class got the name reptilia the reptiles are mostly terrestrial they have become completely terrestrial and their body is also modified for terrestrial life they have two pairs of pentadactyl limbs and the digits are provided with claws for terrestrial life these are the first successful terrestrial vertebrates and their body is also dry cutaneous glands or skin glands are absent and the body is covered by scales then the body is also divided into a head neck trunk and a tail because these are terrestrial animals they have got a well developed and a flexible neck but in the snakes limbs are absent the body of snakes is elongated and due to the crawling habit they lost legs but there are some snakes like python anaconda etc still they have got the hind limbs and very good deals in the form of vestigial organs then the epidermis of some of the reptile like snakes is no more than cast off is called molting then snake the reptiles are polyclusms they can't maintain a constant body temperature and the teeth are present on both the jaws to help in feeding just like amphibians the digestive excretory and the reproductive systems end up in cloaca but here the cloaca is a three chambered structure and the urinary bladder also opens into the cloaca then reptiles for the first time they have got temporal fasciae to give support to jaw muscles that's why the jaw muscles are very strong in these animals remember reptiles are the ancestors of both mammals and birds so mammals and birds have also inherited the temporal fasciae from reptiles then the endoskeleton of these animals is mostly made up of bone and the ribs are present and the ribs are joined with sternum in the amphibians ribs are usually absent even if ribs are present in the amphibians there is no sternum but here there is a well developed sternum ribs join with the sternum and form a rib cage lungs are well developed and the pulmonary respiration is the only type of respiration in reptiles but there is one exception there are turtles living in the sea water they exhibit cloacal respiration along with pulmonary respiration the heart is incompletely four chambered there are two auricles but the ventricle is incompletely divided so the oxygenated and the deoxygenated blood mix up in the ventricle and this mixed blood is supplied to all body parts but there is one exception in the form of crocodiles in the crocodiles the heart is completely four chambered so you have to remember this point very carefully 
Crocodiles also exhibit a number of mammalian characters. Like mammals, they have got thicodont type of teeth. Like mammals, they have got a diaphragm also. Then, RBC are oval, nucleated and biconvex. Both renal and hepatic systems are well developed in reptiles. Then the coming to the brain, it is reasonably well developed. And the cranial nerves are 12 pairs. Remember, in all the amniotes, amniotes means reptiles, birds and mammals, the cranial nerves are 12 pairs. In all anamniotes, that means anamniotes means amphibians and fishes, the cranial nerves are only 12, 10 pairs. Then, these reptiles have a sense organ known as Jacobson's organ. Jacobson's organ is concerned with sense of smell or olfaction. Except for snakes, eyes are covered with or eyes are protected by three eyelids each. In snakes, eyelids are fused over the eyes. So in snakes, the eyelids are immobile. Then coming to the ears, only middle and internal ear are present and the middle ear is covered by a tympanic membrane and the middle ear bone is known as columella oris. Kidneys are metanephric and the nitrogenous waste product is uric acid. So it is an adaptation for conservation of water. Because they excrete uric acid, reptiles are called uricotelic animals. Sexes are separate and fertilization is internal. The copulated organs may be one or two. When there are two copulated organs, they are known as hemipenis. All are oviparous or ovoviparous. And eggs are megalecithal. Reptiles also exhibit parental care. One most important point is, during the embryonic development, four extra embryonic membranes appear in reptiles, birds and mammals. These are amnion, elantois, chorion and yolk sac. Because of the presence of these membranes, these three classes are known as amniotes. Fishes and amphibians, they do not produce extra embryonic membranes during their embryonic development. So they are called amniotes. So reptiles are amniotes. And the development is direct without any larval stages. Coming to the examples, Chilone is the turtle. Remember, turtles means they live in seawater. Testudo, this is called tortoise or terrapin. Terrapins are terrestrial animals. Chameleon or chameleon, it is a tree lizard. It is famous for its color change. It has also got a prehensile tail. The tail coils like a offspring. And the eyes of this animal move independently of each other. Crocodilus means crocodile. Alligator means alligator. Hemidacterus, it is the wall lizard. Under its digits, it has got suckers with the help of which it can climb walls. Naja, or Naja means Indian cobra. It is a poisonous snake. Bangaras, common name is Krait. It is also a poisonous snake. Viper, Viper or SLI, it's called, common name is Viper. It is also a poisonous snake and all the three poisonous snakes are found in India. Then, <coughs> Rhynchocephalus. Rhynchocephalus. Rhynchocephalus is known as a living fossil. It is found in New Zealand and for many million, millions of years it has not undergone any evolutionary change. This Rhynchocephalus has also a well-developed third eye or pineal eye. Then, there are some more but not given in the book. These are some of the important uh, examples of reptiles. So that is about uh, class amphibia and class reptilian. Thank you.